We came close to discovering the destructive capacity of solar storms at least twice. And now that our sun is again getting close to its peak activity, the probability of another strong plasma explosion is rising. Is this peak in our star's activity? What level of destruction should we be expecting on Earth? This could impact you in more ways than you can imagine, so stay tuned to learn more about this impending phenomenon. To get a good grip on the effect this impending solar storm can have on Earth, we will have to go back some centuries. The largest solar flare ever recorded was observed on September 2, 1859 by British astronomer Richard Carrington. And 18 hours later, one of the most powerful geomagnetic storms ever recorded struck Earth. Aside from the several telegraph poles that were torched, all the telegraphs in Europe and North America stopped working on that day. In fact, nearly the entire planet was able to observe the northern lights. Although it didn't take long to recover from the disaster, it should be noted that the civilization of that time was not as reliant on electricity as it is today, meaning the impact of such an incident today would be devastating. Fast forward to March 1989, when a second powerful solar storm hit Earth. Despite this strike being a mild solar outburst, the whole Canadian province of Quebec went completely dark for 12 hours, cutting off millions of people from electricity. Solar winds is produced when the sun's gravity is no longer able to contain a torrent of extremely high energy particles. According to scientists, the coronal holes, which are huge dark patches on the star, are where these solar winds originate. Despite the sun's great distance from Earth, coronal mass ejections can reach us in two to six days. The highest energy particles, however, can travel the same distance in only two minutes, with the planet's magnetic field diverting the majority of them toward the poles, very few particles reach the atmosphere, and here they collide with gas molecules, causing the formation of light-emitting atoms. The sun occasionally begins to produce extremely strong flares with energy that is equivalent to millions of hydrogen bombs with 100 megatons. Since plasma moves twice as quickly through space during a solar storm like this, charged particles can either pierce or dramatically modify the magnetic field of the planet Earth with such force. This then leads to geomagnetic storms being created and the most powerful ones can cause a great deal of catastrophe. Scientists once thought that the Carrington solar storm only happened once per century, but after researchers from the British Antarctic Survey and the University of Warwick examined the solar flare patterns, they found that stronger magnetic storms occur far more frequently than previously believed. Surprisingly, there is an approximately 11-year cycle in solar activity. And when at its height, the sun experiences extremely violent activity, as successive waves of charged particles are sent hurtling toward Earth. After the entire list of the Earth's magnetic field's alterations was examined, the findings demonstrated that the strongest solar explosions also correspond with the most notable geomagnetic activity bursts. Researchers have since then discovered the two categories of the phenomena that pose the greatest threat to the Earth. The first is strong magnetic superstorms, which occur every three years on average. They also have an impact on the health of those well-being influenced by the weather, resulting in headaches, blood pressure increases, and the escalation of chronic illnesses. They don't, however, result in serious technological issues. The second is the fiercest and most destructive megastorms, which are far more uncommon. Researchers have only been able to identify six such occurrences during a 150-year period. This means solar storms hit our planet every 25 years on average, and there has been no record of a megastorm in the last 20 years. This is perhaps why scientists anticipate the next one to occur pretty soon. But then, the studies recently showed that a strong geomagnetic storm has the ability to break the sun's 11-year cycle of activity and abruptly strike the Earth when it's at its least active. Historians have also once more unearthed a comparable instance from 9,200 years ago. 
During this time, a solar storm of unparalleled strength was said to have struck our planet, according to a recent study of ancient ice samples found beneath Greenland and Antarctica. So disastrous solar storms can occur when we least anticipate them. In fact, Earth recently experienced one of such extraordinary solar storms that created a massive fire canyon. A beautiful animation of this massive ejection of charged plasma was even displayed by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, followed by the solar wind that arrived at Earth in April 2022. Charged particles also pelted our globe after a solar flare on August 9th, slamming into Earth's magnetosphere at a speed of 600 kilometers and resulting in auroras. However, according to scientists, this time we were simply lucky because a stronger solar storm may have caused a disaster rather than the beautiful celestial display that we saw. With this, it would be therefore be fatal if the subsequent solar explosion equaled the Carrington event's intensity, which set a record for the most powerful geomagnetic storm ever seen. Some estimates put the cost of the destruction at billions or perhaps trillions of dollars. And let's not forget the possible effects of such occurrences are not limited to the absence of electricity or computers. There is also the probability of numerous natural disasters being triggered. It is now a matter of necessity that researchers come up with a warning system in order to lessen the possible harmful effects of solar storms. This is why we now have two spacecraft, the Solar and the Helispheric Observatory, SOHO, and the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, that are constantly investigating the sun. And with their data, we will be able to receive timely warnings about extreme events on the star. The Parker Solar Probe from NASA is also held in high regard to assist in this study. The probe is currently traveling nearer to the sun than any other spacecraft has and can therefore detect coronal emissions more quickly than any other spacecraft. Astronomers will then be able to trace a storm's formation region on the sun and perhaps even pinpoint its trajectory with greater accuracy. The National Institute for Fusion Science in Japan has recently built an artificial geomagnetic field to shield Earth from space when the solar storms come. This is because geophysicists estimate that over the past 150 years, the planet's own field has shrunk by around 10%. This could then make Earth incapable of withstanding the bursts of extremely accelerated charged solar particles. Therefore, to safeguard ourselves, scientists have advised launching 12 superconducting rings into space. However, if those structures are already around the Earth, perhaps we won't need to create any. An amazing discovery by NASA's Van Allen probes show that a form of artificial energy barrier currently surrounds the planet and it was created by people as a result of cosmic particles and very low frequency radio waves interacting. Researchers from NASA claim that these signals created what seems to be a large energy bubble surrounding the Earth, with the position of the inner edge of the Van Allen radiation belts very close to where its outer layer ends. According to observations, the radiation belt boundary would have been far closer to Earth than it is right now if there were no bubbles as these belts gather solar wind particles that are charged and eventually damage the planet's magnetosphere. Would the steps taken be enough to protect Earth next time the sun lets out a big belch?